So, people of America, people of the world, uh, here for you all to enjoy, as I've been enjoying them for the last, what, 23 years of, yeah, sharing time on planet Earth with these three little creatures that one by one came to the world without any instructions about how to be a dad? Let me welcome to my podcast, Longer Tables, Carlota, Inés, and Lucia. Bienvenidas. Welcome. Thank you for having us, Dad. Yeah. I thought I thought we were never going to be on this. I know. Thank you. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, can I just say, we sat down and you poured yourself a glass of wine. And my glass is still empty. And her glass is still empty. Sorry, Lucia, you can't. You, you, you are my baby girl. I mean, it would be nice of you to pour a little wine. Okay, I'll put the wine. But we are here doing a podcast. Yeah, we're here working, Carlota. Yeah. We're here working, Dad. And no, you know, we, you can tell we're working because I love Dad's podcast voice. It's so it's so calm. <laughs> Excuse me, but, but you're not working. This is life. This is life itself. Family is not work. Even I know sometimes family looks like work. Did you just hear her dig at you about your podcast voice? No, it's great. It's calming. It's a great change of pace, you know, from what we've thank had you, this past you. year with the TV show. High energy constantly. Yeah, I feel like this is the first time in a long time that we've just been able to sit and on a couch. Very comfy couch, may and I say. It's the first time we've been able to just sit, talk, and actually listen to each other without, you know, stepping over each other. Should we do podcasts during family time? <laughs> family, family, time. family time. There he goes. <laughs> Broken record. Family time. He loves his family time. Uh, family, family times. Where did, was that even from? Um, One of the summers. Yeah. Every summer we have a favorite new song or... Every new thing, family times, family, family times. So, ladies, we've been together in this amazing trip. I think um, your mom, Patricia, as we call her, Tichi, with, she should be here with us, but she always loved to be behind, behind, making everything work. Um... Let me tell you, my life changed the day, Carlota, Inés, Lucia. Being in the hospital next to your mom, the moment that every one of you three came to the world, every single time, I cry. I know your mom was doing the hard work, which was bringing you to the world. But for me, seeing you come into the world and the first time you cry and the first time I hold you in my arms, <laughs> oh, my God, this is a moment I'll never forget. And I, I don't know if I ever told you about it, but these were seconds, moments. I have a question for you. Yes? What are our birthdays? Carlota first. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Okay. I have a question. I have a, a question to you. <laughs> right. Can I look at my phone? No. no. <laughs> at least my birthday. Because I was the last one. Well, with you, they decided no more. I mean, you need to understand, Lucia. You are the last one. I barely remember. The important is not the date or the hour. The important thing that everybody forgets is the moment. So, what day it was, so, was that in that so, moment? So, Dad, I'll put this I in, in your terms. <laughs> I'll put this in your terms. What fruits or vegetables are in season, well, or were in season when we were born? At least seasons. That's a, such a good question. Yeah. What did you eat the I'm day? repeating myself. The most important thing are not <laughs> the days, the hour of the seasons. The most important thing is the moment. What I've heard, stories that I've heard is that you went to McDonald's when I was born, and there's uh -oh. there's proof of you holding a bag 
a McDonald's in the hospital room no. on the day that I was born. I mean, I, I don't Follows think it was Photoshop. That, that story is not real. This is fake news, obviously. Yes, they had McDonald's, but they bought McDonald's to bring to everybody in the hospital. Mm -hmm. The doctors and the nurses. Why? Because the McDonald's was nearby. The important thing is the first time your mom was doing okay, sleeping, you were great in your crib and everybody was looking after you and you were safe. I went every time, the three times you're born, to Makoto. What's that? Ah, it's the Japanese restaurant. Makoto on yeah. MacArthur Boulevard. And I went there usually in the moment they open, around five, six o'clock, as your mom was still recuperating, sleeping, and you were happily sleeping in your cribs in the hospital at the Sibley Hospital. And I went to Makoto for sushi. I mean, it's so hard to be a dad. Such I, a nice I, celebratory dinner. So every time you came to the world, I went to have Japanese food. <laughs> And that's, that's what you remember. <laughs> that was important. <laughs> this is traditions, lady. Mm -hmm. And if something you know is traditions. Is that place still open? No. It mm -hmm. closed down. That's a good story. I didn't know that. Makoto. The Makoto. You have a baby, go to Makoto. <laughs> but, Dad, you brought up mom. And I think it's so important to acknowledge her role during um, the show. She was there, even though she wasn't there on camera, she was there every single step of the way, every single day, making sure we had our outfits, we woke up on time, we were... That we weren't fighting. That we weren't fighting. We never fight. We never, no, never. fight. Family times. Family, family time. times is not fighting. <laughs> family times is showing that families are beautiful, imperfect things. But... But mom was such a glue and is such a glue in our family. And we just needed to acknowledge that. And we never forget that. But hold on. You're talking about your mom as the show. The person behind making sure everything run. Can I add to that that your mom is the glue in your dad's life? In all of our lives. In our family life. In uh, all our friends' life. That she's the whispering voice making sure that everything keeps running. She leaves such an impact on every single person's life. I, so many people come up to me and say, your mom is the most amazing person I have met. And I was like, I know. That's my mom. What can I tell you? Luthia? I agree with that. I'm the one who looks the most like her. And am the most like her. Uh, so I wouldn't I like say you say have. Say I wouldn't say you have all her. Good I make qualities. impacts on people. Are well. you crying? So, yes, we spoke about your mom. Your mom, without a doubt, has been my best friend. Has been. I don't think I will make it through life without her. Period. No, I don't think. No, I know I wouldn't make it through life without her. And in the process, you three came along. And we've been going through life together. And many years later, we got into a pandemic. And the world stopped. And we began doing what we do all the time, cooking at home. But because the moment was kind of so dark, we decided to do something to have fun and share the fun we were having with others that maybe were going through the same thing we were going as a family. And we did recipes for the people yes mm -hmm. and we began shooting whatever we were cooking with Beatriz your cousin mm -hmm. who she was staying with us because she couldn't go back to Spain because everything was shut down and we began doing these videos cooking as family putting Hamilton and other songs and singing and cooking and having crazy fun times together and you did many of those videos with me, me with you. And out of that crazy moment, we thought, hey, why we don't do a family trip to Spain together 
obviously, and shooting and celebrating life that the world hopefully is going to open again and we're family and traveling and being in this kind of amazing moment of discovering things or going back to the places we love and we feel comfortable. Let's do a show. Ines, what is Ines. the name of the show? Jose Andres and family in Spain. Whose family? It could be any family, but this season he decided to do it with his family. Right? The Thanks. only family I have. It's uh -huh. not like I have more than I know, one but family. and family, Jose Andres and family, it's it's you so know So you are highly opinionated about the title of the show. Applications are welcome for season two. Yeah. Exactly. For the name? For no, the families. No, for families. We already uh, did this family. Well, me. well yeah. the title should have been Jose Andres and his family. So people of Discovery Plus. Or the you, family. People of Discovery Plus, if you're listening to this podcast, my daughters are not still very happy about the title. No, we're happy. We're just not happy. Opinionated. Opinionated. So you are opinionated, not happy. Which we got from you. Uh, I am opinionated. Like... You are opinionated? Oh, my God, you are opinionated. Do you know how hard it is to be a dad that everybody says is one of the best chefs of the world <laughs> and you keep complaining about everything I cook every single day of the year? Oh, Dad, well, you know that we're <sighs> your biggest critics, but we're also your biggest fans. You are? Yeah, we are. Oh, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> <laughs> so, come on. I am easy to work with, right? That's that's a that's a loaded question. <laughs> it's definitely not what I was expecting. <laughs> well, okay, I want to know more. I think everybody listening to this Longer Tables podcast would like to know more about the insights. I am easy to work with or not? At times, it really might, it really depends. Uh, the the time that we're in, if it's a morning, if it's night, if it's the afternoon. What. I am just so amazed with is the capacity that you have to be able to turn from being on filming for the show, then two seconds later, be in an interview for talking about, you know, anything. What hunger? Yeah. And then the next you're emailing um, the CEO of your company. Uh, to make sure that your restaurants are still running. So the capacity that your brain has to juggle all of these things, to me, is just, I don't understand. I think during during the show, I think it was easy to work with Dad. I mean, Inez is making a face at me right now. But I think we saw a new side of him that we hadn't really seen before. His really? work, you know, work, film, filming kind of side. I, I disagree. I think we've all, you know, even going into the TV show, we all, I mean, know each other pretty well. Like, you guys are my best friends. And we know Dad's different sides. Yes, he's amazing and has so much energy and so much love to give. But he's also one of the grumpiest <laughs> and most stubborn people I have ever met. Yeah. And so us because we love you and we're always going to be here you know we've learned how to kind of crack that shell when you get stubborn i'm still figuring that one out but i'm the youngest so okay you are trying to figure out what out the grumpy or the <laughs> the grumpy or the stubborn both are you grumpy and stubborn yes i admit it uh, i admit Ines, it are you grumpy and stubborn yeah carlota are you grumpy and stubborn no Actually, uh, I agree. You are not yeah. grumpy and stubborn. You are far away closer to your mom than you are to your dad. Ines, my... Is exactly you. My grumpiness and the stubborn. I'm working on it. But I could argue that I always say that we are a perfect, imperfect family. <laughs> dysfunctional family. <laughs> a Chaotic dysfunctional family. family. Are, are not every family like that? Like we always have a tendency to look outside the window and say oh i would love to be like this other family and For every me, family has these amazing moments and 
there are more complicated moments. The funny thing is when I was younger, you know, like lower school, maybe like second grade, I thought we were a normal family. I thought that eating like caviar and percebes on a school night was normal. Okay, caviar, and I understood. Percebes, can you describe what percebes are? Percebes, the, the barnacles. Goose snack. What? Gooseneck barnacles. Goose barnacles. Goose barnacles. You of didn't, course, go. You didn't go to catch gooseneck barnacles, even yeah. you ate them. I did it. But the thing is that when I was younger, I thought it was the normal, right? But then the older I got, <laughs> that's <laughs> I realized how not normal we are in a good way, right? I mean, that's yeah. a good thing. Why? We are not normal But, because we eat gooseneck barnacles? Well, I'm just saying that we've done an eating things at home that, for me, I thought were always so normal. So you need to be eating mac and cheese to be normal? I mean... I love mac some, and in cheese. In some sense, yes. I love mac and But cheese. But not every day. Not every day. Or a hot dog. I love hot dogs. <laughs> But not every day. You remember when we will stop driving around America that you will tell me, Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> let's stop in this fast food joint. <laughs> And I will tell you why. And you said because we need to do research, research and development. <laughs> research and development. I got you to do the research and development at Burger King on our way to New York. Do you remember that? I remember that. And we order what? Every, Every single thing on the menu. Especially the new ones, the new things. And Taco Bell. Do you remember Taco Bell? I remember Taco Bell. It just, that's the thing about you, you know? You go big or go home. We show up to a restaurant, we either try it all, get our hands dirty, or... We don't go at all. And that's that's what we did in Spain, I think, in this, in this adventure that we went on. All around Spain, s touching and seeing all of these different things. Research and development. Yeah, but really, that was research and development, I think. And we're going to keep that with us for forever. And now when we go back to Spain, I mean, there's still so much more we have to explore in so many regions that we didn't touch um, during during this during these six episodes, but I'm excited to see more because I know that there's so much more to do. So to how old are you, Carlota? I'm 23. Ines, how old are you? Dad, how old am I? Come on, I know. 21. Keep going with my podcast. I'm in charge. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Yes, chef. She's what, 21. How old are you? 21. And Lucia? 21. I am 18 years old. All right, I'm how old I am. You are 50-something years old. No, he's more like three. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm 53. Oh, usually people don't say their age once they're past 50. I didn't think you would <laughs> share that on the podcast. That's why I said 50-something. I thought that was woman who uh, didn't share their whoa, age. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But when you're starting to norms. lose your hair, I feel like, you know, you don't. Who is losing the hair? <laughs> uh, let's put it this way. I make my hair quicker in the morning than... You three together. You you've been uh -huh. you've been you've been complaining about how our hair is, looks so perfect and and nice you know nice curls that we have, but I think you're just saying it because you're out of jealousy. jealousy. Oh right. Yeah. So, we go to Spain every year, before you even were aware. And <laughs> That's so, so well, because wrong. you were coming when you were baby. Yeah. So. Against your will. <laughs> so we went to Spain. No, technically, in sorry. the middle of the pandemic. I didn't hear him. And I only want to know what was really new or surprising to every one of you, Carlota. I mean, I in every region that we went to, even if we had been there before, there was something new that we learned. But Valencia, for example. What? That was the first time uh, that we had really spent a long time in Valencia. We had gone in passing, and it, we went during Las Fallas, the week-long uh, festival of fire, right? That, that's what fallas um, translates to in English. Or burning. Uh, or bur burning, Lucia? Or fire. <laughs> Those <laughs> amazing... Constructions. It's like paper mache, wooden sculptures yeah. that are celebrating huge. life. And we had heard about them, but we had never been there before. And you took us there, and it was incredible. And we were there towards the end of it when they burn all of these wooden sculptures in the middle of the city. In the middle of the city, and we say fire in the middle of the city. I thought you were trying to kill us because we got so close to one of those sculptures. 
My face was on fire. It was red. Are I you think saying I got that they put you in danger? I think I think I got like first degree yeah. burn I on my face. I was scared that my eyelashes were gonna burn off again. Again? Why well, again? Hold on, hold on. What? <laughs> what why piece. are you talking about again? When that happens before? You all know this story. So, are we... you trying to say I'm covering up something about our lives? I I mean, it was not your fault. We always cook paella at home. Family tradition. We're trying, us girls, we're trying to master the paella making. And I think this was five years ago. A really windy day, you know? We cook paella rain or shine. And it was kind of a windy day. I'm there controlling the fire. I lean down to put in some more wood, and then a gust of wind just comes right in. Flame kind of gets near my face, chars my eyelashes off. But she now has the longest eyelashes of this family, so we all have to ask her what her trick is. <laughs> But that was, you know, you got to be careful cooking paella. I, I was aware of that moment. Yes, you were aware. Uh, I, 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 I was aware that mm. I burned your eyelashes. Oh, you were aware. So yes, I highly were. recommend cooking paella and open fire, but be careful. Dad, you actually burnt my eyelashes as well. What? When? And you did. This was okay. your doing. You actually you... left me in a supermarket once. So oh, we, we no, can get no, back to on, that later. On. I want to know what I left you in a supermarket <laughs> Dad, you once. Know. Inez was mostly at fault here, but you were the one driving the car and forgot to count heads. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, ladies, oh, you Lucia. know that this podcast is life. Like, judges may be listening to this podcast. <laughs> I think this is a roast I am an Jose. immigrant. I need some people that want to send immigrants we're just, we're just to showing yell people away from America. you, man. Oh, I'm American now, <laughs> so they cannot kick me out. <laughs> but you are portraying me like I'm this... Dad, that is, I mean, you remember first time I showed you how to cut with a knife? Yep. Fingers. And in... I was fighting with your mom because your mom kept saying, they're too young. Well, how old were we? I don't remember. I think my earliest Five. memory of you was you peeling a shrimp, showing me how to peel shrimp. When I was like five years old, maybe. But that's not dangerous. Peeling no, it wasn't dangerous. It's what you know. young people do when they're five. <laughs> yeah, of course exactly. it is. Heads on. Yeah, I mean, you can But I didn't actually like shrimp. shrimp until I was 12 when you kept forcing me to eat them. But now I love them, so I'm glad you did that. Mm. So thank you. This is my opportunity to say thank you. Okay, so my dear friends of longer tables, you may think I'm a monster <laughs> because I burned the eyelashes of my daughter. Oh, I forget my daughter's at the supermarket. <laughs> okay, it's true. Those things happen, but I never said I'm a perfect person. We're an imperfect, perfect family. Dysfunctional. Dysfunctional at times. Like probably every other family around the world. And that's why we love each other. So, on this show, I ask you, what was new or surprising to you? And you barely answered oh, that me question. that question. I answered it. You did, but you began you about saying you about how I about burned your Spain? eyelashes. I forgot you in a <laughs> supermarket. So, Ines, what was the surprising to you? Come on, answer yes, me. Yes. Answer me for a change. Yes, a chef. question. I look like I'm a dad answer <laughs> this podcast. Dad, this rambling that happens between us, we get it from you as well. You ramble a lot. I don't Sorry. rumble. What is rumble? Explain this. Doesn't matter. Yes, new yes. or surprising. <laughs> I, um, I loved going to visit the Canary Islands. Most of our family lives on the peninsula. And so we don't regularly go to the islands. We've gone to Ibiza before. So much fun. But, you know, going to visit the Canary Islands was an incredible experience. Lanzarote. Lanzarote. So different from the other Spain that I've seen. It's a volcanic island. It was amazing. And we even got in the water, which was so much fun. We went surfing there. You were really good at surfing. Inez and Lucia, you both were very good at surfing. I think I got up once uh, out of many, many, no, many no, times. We did it. But, but this is not a show about surfing no. or kite surfing that you are so good at. This is a show about food. I think it's a show about a little bit of everything. Food, family, Love. you know. Yeah, discovering Spain. Adventure. And even if you think you know, you know, your neighborhood, your backyard, <coughs> there's still so much to discover. And that's so, kind of what we did. That's Eagle great, did. but can you answer me about what was surprising to you once 
I, I feel I'm being a dad. <laughs> Can you answer me in my podcast? I will answer my you. Question. I will. You, you look like politicians in Washington, no. D.C. No, I'm telling you. Because we grew I, up in D.C. Yeah. But I loved visiting the Canary Islands in Lanzarote and seeing a new side of Spain that we hadn't really seen. The accent's different. I'd never heard that <sighs> accent before. Were like, you expecting, like, what we saw in Lanzarote? Is that what you were expecting, what you had in mind, Inez? I just, I didn't even really know what to expect. I went into Lanzarote knowing papas arrugas and mojo. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, my daughters are taking over this podcast. They are asking questions between themselves and they are putting me aside totally. This for now is no longer tales with Jose Andres. This is longer tales with the Andres sisters. Boom. Boom. What? The boom is mine. <laughs> so... Ines, one more question. Oh, okay, yes, sir. Am I? What was new or surprising? <laughs> I thought, I thought because I, I'm trying to I, get. I, I, I said that. about the islands that was okay, cool, yes, but yes, you yes, remember cool. the moment we went to see those fishermen coming well, back was, from the sea? Ugh, and those what shrimp the, and those lobsters. That in the prawns, prawns. Sorry, it just in Spanish. There's so many more words to describe seafood, or maybe I just don't know the words to describe the seafood. What was in the English. name in the Spanish? Carabineros. Carabineros. Yes. Carabineros. Carabineros. They were the most beautiful carabineros. They were so, so beautiful colorful. that I don't even know why we ate them. And then in true dad fashion, of course, you behind the scenes, you're trying to get the fisherman's number so that you can <laughs> just order them when when you want. That was hilarious. By the way, I have the phone. Yeah, oh, I know. And <laughs> this that's probably Christmas, what you're going to have for it's Christmas. It's so worth it because we those are gonna were get incredible. Them. Why? That's why behind the scenes is important. Mm -hmm. This is why I don't know how to cook, why I don't know how to go to the supermarket and shop because I'm just used to you doing it all. That Now that I live alone, I, I struggle a lot. Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't even know how to order. Cooking. I don't even know how to order at a restaurant Lucia. when I'm not with you because... <laughs> I don't know what to get. And I, I feel know. like I always have to call you or text you. I know how to order. I order the whole menu. I never know because how to that's order. that's what he does. So that's that's what I've learned. People of longer tables, as you can see, I'm not the perfect dad. I've been overprotecting my daughters, <laughs> and they are complaining that. Yeah. Oh, I'm not complaining. Yeah, and I will say the great thing is you're usually always on your phone, and so we call you. It's like, hey, dad, I have a chicken. What do I do with it? And then you just give us the instructions, right? But you there. know the funny part that when you call me on WhatsApp about Daddy, what do I do with this? What? I remember um, 1996. We weren't born yet. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. Oh, okay. But the woman that gives you birth, who happens is my wife. She used to call her mother <laughs> when AT and T will charge you two or three dollar per minute to call Spain and your mom Patricia will be with your grandma Pilar learning how to make chickpeas and spinach you know how long it takes to learn how to make chickpeas and spinach <laughs> like three hours you know the bill that we used to pay for your mom to make the perfect <laughs> chickpeas and spinach that you three love so much Life has changed dramatically. They are <laughs> delicious. They are delicious. I, well, I think it was worth it. a lot it. of money. I think it was worth it. I almost went broke <laughs> just making chickpeas and spinach. So now when you call me, I love it. I love it because when you call me, it's almost like, I don't know if you call me because I'm your dad, <laughs> because you need me. I know you can get it on Google, but I love when you call me. We call each other a lot. And we WhatsApp a lot. When you answer the phone. What? It's true. You do when you're on your phone, you like you do WhatsApp and you will and you you randomly call us and you'll ask the worst me, times, man. At I the say. worst times, that is true. <laughs> and when you are in an exam in the middle of the exam. Yeah. Or when you are in a party and you say, Daddy, I cannot talk to you because <laughs> I'm in a party. Great, thank you. It's more important people than your dad right now in your life. Talking about parties, I want to go back to the Lanzarote part. Uh, do you realize that they were making wine with volcanic soil? The grapes 
We're in volcanic soil. Yeah, that was uh, was incredible. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the science of that. The science of making something happen out of a place that has no water. It's crazy. I mean, it, it, I, the, I'm not speaking because I'm trying to wrap my head around it. It was inc- it was incredible, and the wine was delicious. And I think it's very underrated wine, um, because you know, wine from from Lanzarote and I believe the Canary Islands in general is is amazing. But it's not the same for any other place around the world that they're able to do something out of nothing. So the question I have for you is that we're talking more about what was happening behind the scenes that would what was happening actually in the show. And I think the best part of the show is what was not on the show itself. From the moment we wake up to the moment we went to bed. So, of all the things didn't make it into the show, what do you think was the best parts of the trip? Even when we were not filming, that, that for you were amazing, enjoyable, going shopping with mom, or I don't know, going to make your hair. I mean, obviously I don't need to make my hair because my hair is always perfect. I think, um, you know, in the moment, it was not the best time, but now looking back, I laugh a lot, but this this scene didn't get um, put into the show, but we were in Valencia. We went to La Albufera, <laughs> which is uh, these rivers, lakes. It's the wetlands, would the you describe wetlands. it? Wetlands, that's a good, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So these wetlands in, in Valencia where they, they get the rice from. Yeah, they, they have the rice fields. The amazing thing is it's right outside of the city, and so it would provide food for the city and for the surrounding areas. One of the best rice producing regions in the world, with permission with all the Chinese places and everywhere else. Yeah, but... You know, we went on an extremely rainy day. It was pretty cold. Spent the whole day there. Whole day. And we were on these <laughs> little boats. Like, very, very little. And my dad was the captain of this tiny... I don't even know what to call it. Um, I was in the Spanish Navy. Oh, yeah. yes. I forgot about that. You were a sailor, a sailor back in the day. But um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? You were what? I was in the Spanish Navy. Of course. But I, I am not an admiral, but almost. I feel like one. <laughs> you were a cook in the Spanish Navy. For the admiral. Mm-hmm. Don't make him bring it up again. Um, are you making me sound like a grandpa that already is telling stories about war times? I mean, come on. I was in the Spanish Navy. Yeah, what I love about the stories from you in the Spanish Navy is you got to travel the world and... I think, I don't know. Do you think you were always curious or is that when your curiosity really kicked in? I was always curious. I remember coding with something called BASIC. Are you aware of Commodore 64 (laughs) and Armstrong? No, (laughs) no. Okay, I used to have those computers. I will write my own, I will write my own programs to, I don't know, do exams. <laughs> By the way, you are always doing exams. So I could pass my exam on Latin language. Or I will write program to play my own games. Oh my God, life has changed a lot. Yeah, this is funny hearing you talk about studying for exams because we knew this about you before. But when we went to Barcelona, it really, you know, confirmed it for us, meeting all your, or seeing all your childhood friends again. And, and what did you were, learn from that you were them the best me? student that well, you didn't even go to class? Nope. But why you didn't go to class? Well, one thing I know for fact is that you would skip your French class to go back to the cooking class, right? So you would have double double cooking classes. But they didn't even go to day. cooking class because for me it was better to be in the restaurant. That's true. Your teachers didn't really like you. I saw <laughs> the comments. <laughs> What are you talking about? Cards. My teachers love me. They were my best friends. Okay. Your and teachers your were your cards. best friends? Yeah. Your only friends? Is no, my, my best friends. But what happened? I, I, 
Do you know why this show came to be? Tell us. Because I realized that your father, myself, Jose, <laughs> I was a person that I would learn more by being with boots on the ground and learning from the experts on the field, in the restaurants, in the caves, in the fields, in the mountains, than just being in a classroom. I realized that my classroom was the world. And if you realize, every time I try to bring you to the world, is trying to recreate my own experiences. Carlota, when you were trying to convince me about going far away to university, you know I never understood why people have to go from the place you live to a far away city in another part of the country when you are applying for a university. And I told you a story. And I told you about how important growing up as a young boy in the streets of Manhattan were. And I want you to study in Washington. And I want you to apply for a university in Washington. And then you call me for a meeting. And you block an hour. And we sat down. And you told me something about. And you told me something about why you were supposed to apply to New York University. Do you remember what you told me? I don't. Maybe I made it up. That's why I don't remember. You told me, Daddy, you told me about how important it was for you to be uh. a young boy in the streets of New York. And what did you tell me? Daddy, I only want to be like you and have the same experience. And it worked. Wait, well, it, it took me three minutes. That meeting took three minutes. I was like defeated before even I was trying to make my own argument. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. I came to New York and now you guys have to follow me. Yeah, and we come more often here yeah. because you're here. Yeah. On top of that, we have some restaurants here. But that's why being able to do this show, that was one of the things that I appreciated the most because I don't see you guys that much anymore. But being able to go back to Spain with all of us gave me the opportunity to spend more time with, with my family. And that is one of one big part of, of why I enjoy doing this with you all so much. And you, Inés? Um, what I enjoy about the show? Is that? Whatever. Oh. About life? Yeah, yeah, about life. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying life right now. We've been spending... A lot of time <laughs> promoting the show. And I'm, you know, after all that hard work, and it was definitely a new experience for us because we've never done TV. But I'm okay. really proud. Can I, can I change that assessment of yours? Uh, when you were six years old, <laughs> you came to Madrid when your daddy used to have a TV show in a Spanish TV. Yeah. And in a show that was having 22, 23% ratings, which this doesn't exist anymore, anywhere in the planet, we were making an American breakfast for a Spanish audience. And you were there making pancakes for all the Spanish people on the main Spanish TV. Well, I remember you were asking me to bring you oranges. And I kept bringing you lemons. Is that correct? <laughs> this is this is funny. Like Ines, can you bring me oranges, please? Yeah. I think that's the definition of Ines. That is that is Ines. Like orange juice or lemonade. Same I mean, thing. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I know Forrest Gump said life is like a box of chocolates. I could argue a box is like a box of citrus. Sometimes they bring you oranges, other times they bring you lemons. Yeah, <laughs> I can't, I cannot really explain, but. And, and, Lucia, you were so tiny on that show. You were so tiny that we had to put like three orange boxes behind the kitchen table so we could see you. She wasn't in it. I wasn't in it. You I were was in, in it. it. No, it was me and Inez. The three of you were there. There's I one remember. that I remember filming at home. No, but you were in that show. Time. What happened? Sometimes, because you were so tiny, Lucia, I would cry. 
No, but to make a TV show is hard. And sometimes you were like, I want to be here, I don't want to be here. I want to be here, I don't want to be here. I want to be here, I don't want to be here. Sounds oh. like Lucia. Sounds like me. But then you did a second TV show with me. <sighs> Made did. in Spain. Your mom one day told me, you want to be a TV boy with no disrespect to the people doing TV or cooking TV? Or you want to be a chef that uses TV to tell the story of what you love? And in a moment that your dad was doing an amazing TV show in Spain, I could retire doing that TV show. Because your mom, I stopped that TV show with 20, 22, 23% ratings, share. I mean, amazing. And I began doing the show on PBS. And on that show, 26 episodes on PBS, one time, we were cooking at home. You remember what we were cooking? I Pancakes? No. Paella. Fides con almejas. Okay. We were you're, out, us three, we were outside. I remember we were outside in a And it was you're a confused we, because we cooked so many dishes together in our lifetime. So what did we cook on top of a grill? Meat. Vegetables. Vegetables? Calzots. Paella. I said paella. That was the first thing. No, that I you said. say paella. You didn't. Paella. paella. Thank you. You cook paella. That was the second time we were together on a TV show. But now, you are in a TV show. Jose Andres and family. I know Inez. You don't mm -hmm. like the name of the show. Mm -hmm. Where you are not anymore the daughters of Jose, the daughters of the chef. Actually, some people even argue, who is this bald guy next to those three ladies? Come on. Are we, are we stars of the show as well? I, I'm not saying it. It's obvious to me. <coughs> that show without you wouldn't be the show it is. You know, so, like, Lucia. You forgot me. No, but what, I, mean, what I can only ask what so many favorite, times. What was her favorite? What was her favorite? Part of the show. I cannot ask you many times. So, Lucia. Hello. So, Lucia, what was your favorite part of the show? On camera, off camera? What was important can, to you, Lucia? Can I rephrase the question? You can do whatever you want. I'm going to answer my least, what was my least favorite part, and then what was my favorite part. Because what I had many least favorite okay, parts. Can, can, can I do like I'm the host of this right, show? Right, yeah, yeah, go, go. Lucia, what was your least favorite part of the show? You see, my least favorite part of the show, I say, was, you know, I'm, I'm a picky eater. I'm going to admit it. I'm a picky eater. i not the most adventurous eater. And being in this family and being a picky eater... Can I interrupt doesn't you for go. a second? Doesn't go well. You, you eat uh, oysters? No. You eat shrimp? Now I do. Do you eat uh, gooseneck barnacles? Sometimes. <laughs> do, do you eat cigales? No. Do you eat... Uh, Cheese? Centollo? Preferably not. But you do. I do. You try. I do try. You you are, I mean, you are number one guest at the bathroom because you speed sometimes everything. But you try it. <laughs> This is amazing. But anyways, so I remember there was times on the show when we were eating stuff. Like? Right? Like, I don't want to bring up the cheese, but the cheese, essentially. That but don't bring hilarious. it up, but cheese. But the cheese, that was definitely the biggest part. Uh, and um, you love cheese, Just we being know. around, being in situations that, with food, that I didn't want to have to try. But I felt like I had to in front of the camera. But you know what? There's good things about that because it opened me to trying new foods that I never would have. But on the other hand, there were some things that I was like, maybe when I'm 30, you know? <laughs> but you know what because I Because I'm 18. I'm still young. I'm still living life. I feel like there's a lot of other 18-year-olds out there who've never tried even half of the food that I've eaten. You but know? you know what I love about you, Lucia? Tell me. What? <laughs> that you put yourself out there as you are. Um, sharing with everybody about your feelings in real time. 
the things you love and the things you didn't love so much. And you know why this is important? Because I know many other people, as they are watching the show and they see you being you, and that's why your daughters and your mom and I will love you. <laughs> your daughters. My daughters. Your daughters, Lucia. <laughs> yeah, you they do. <laughs> okay, my English sometimes... We get it. No, we understand. We know what you're trying to say. Your sisters, your mom, and myself, your dad. That you are so willing to share your great moments and the moments you don't enjoy so much. Because you are opinionated about them. Many other people are going to see you. And they're not going to be feeling bad anymore about not enjoying something or not liking something and just being proud of who they are and where is perfection in the imperfection. You don't like cheese? Fuck it. <laughs> Many other people don't know. Boom. Our friend Jorge. I'm joking. <laughs> Jorge Guajardo, the ambassador Guajardo from Mexico. He likes cheese. <clears throat> no. He's opinionated about it. Highly. Yeah. Are you opinionated about it? Always. I love that you are opinionated about it and you give comfort to others to be opinionated about it without Ooh. regrets. What and was, that's why I love you, my lady. I love what you. What was too. your favorite part? Now, my favorite part, to end on a happy note, my favorite part was Asturias, except the cheese. I love. <laughs> Asturias is cheese. Isn't it funny that my least favorite moment and my mo favorite moment are in the same place? Anyways. Um, yes, I loved, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of Asturias before filming, I'm going to admit it. Because the Did rain? Did not like going there. Because, because the rain rainy, and the cows? It's rainy, I'm more of like a city girl, you know, I don't really like the farmland, but I learned so much, I experienced a lot, I ate a lot, and I love it now. I can't wait to go back after. But what did you like about what it? What I liked what about it part? was, I mean, maybe it's because we were so lucky with the good weather. But or I just, because you traveled with great companions. Yes, it was. Now you're just putting words in my mouth. Oh, no. Continue. So I loved the I just I think because we spent so much time there that we've never done that before. Um, I just loved seeing you in your hometown and seeing and being with our family there, you know, seeing our extended family that we don't see that much and just seeing where you grew up. I think that was very special. He, he didn't grow up there. <laughs> he was born there. Was was hold on, hold on, hold on. I grew up there until I, think, I was six. I think you so have to Lucia go back. So is right. Yeah, oh, but Dad, it's the place I grew up, well, even I was the place, not very said, aware where I grew up. It's the place Three. that you always end up going six. back to. Okay. Yeah, but Dad, you just hey, said hey, that you're, we... you guys aren't letting me finish no, speaking. Okay, can, sorry, I'll say this you. after you're done. You guys, Thank you. it's the place that you always go back to. But I loved Asturias. And the land is beautiful. The people are awesome. You're awesome. But I yeah. am awesome. Yeah. Can you tell me this more often? Off. I tell you all the time. Off podcast, please. No, but it, on podcast you have it. On with podcast, you, you want me to say you're not yeah, awesome? Yeah, but I would not, I don't want to look like it's fake. I want you to tell me off podcast. We tell you off podcast too. <laughs> yeah, you don't tell me I'm awesome off podcast. But we were like, Dad, let's go. Daddy, what? you are so annoying. That's what you tell me off podcast. Nah, that's you have three teenage girls. At least I don't we're think spending you are time so with you. That's us. anymore. No, I am. We're still in it. I'm, you are? I'm technically I'm not a teenager anymore. Anyway. I'm prime teenage time. If uh, that makes uh, sense. Okay, I never read those books, so uh, you are. You I are don't think the books would help, so, Dad. We need to be moving because, as I want to have you here for. Eba hours and, and hours because this is amazing to have you here in this <laughs> podcast, Longer Table. So amazing. But this is what I want to know. I told you that this was not a show about Spain. This was a show about family. This was a show trying to move away from the pandemic and trying to tell every family that they've been going through in America and around the world together as, as, an, as a family to say, let's leave the pandemic behind. Let's look outside the window. 
Let's travel. Let's experience life. Let's have a great time. I mean, yes, at the end, this is about Spain. But we could bring a family like ours to any other country in the world. But because you are so familiar with Spain, and many people listening to us right now, they love Spain and Spanish culture and Spanish food, but they love food. But I want you only to give advice of anybody going to Spain or anybody going to any other country. What advice will you give them so they can enjoy their time in amazing ways? Of the experiences you had, what recommendations you have for the people out there listening to this podcast right now? Yes. Um, okay. I would say that if you haven't been to Spain, you have to go visit. And if you have, you should go back and really take it all in with an open mind. If you know a chef, they are great tour guides. We got lucky with you. I mean, you are so curious and people really shouldn't be afraid to go and ask. People are so friendly in Spain, except in Valencia, they're also friendly, but very, very competitive. I'll say because that. Because the Paya Valenciana. Because the Paya Valenciana, yes. People, don't follow Gordon Ramsay. Don't put chorizo in your paella. <laughs> Does he put chorizo in his paella? Oh, my God. Oh, We're yeah. getting off topic here. <laughs> uh, yeah, and... Uh, Everybody in England puts chorizo in our paella. I mean, I I hope we don't have British people working everywhere. Oh, shit, we oh, have on, British Dad. people working with us. Richard Wolf works with us. <laughs> yeah, but he's not really British. He's British, Argentinian, Moroccan. I mean, his team uh, made it almost to the finals in the World Cup. I mean, he's beyond British. I mean, they did better than Spain. Uh, we don't oh, shit, to... yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and England and Morocco did better than Spain. Now I'm really hungry talking about all this food. I think going off of Inez's recommendation, if you know a chef, make them your friend. They can give you all the great <laughs> recommendations, not just for restaurants, but also if you have a friend like my dad, he'll give you the best port to go and get the fisherman's numbers from to get the best uh lobster from he'll give you the best number for um i don't even i don't even remember right now but any he'll give you the best number for anything and this doesn't just go for spain this goes for for everywhere what my two oldest daughters are telling you is befriend a chef <laughs> uh married a chef Boyfriend, a chef. What? No, a chef. <coughs> you don't waste your time. And just bring a chef into your life. Ines, Lucia. Yes. You agree with me? To some extent. I think chefs can be very opinionated as well. <laughs> highly, so, <laughs> highly energetic. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> I have chefs we are opinionated. Chefs in general are stubborn and opinionated. So you, you, you three are chefs. No. No. <laughs> you are highly Far opinionated. Ye yes, but no, we we don't we don't match your talent in the culinary department. So I disagree. Every one of you have a knife. I gave you a knife. Yep. I, I always don't told one. you that if anybody comes home, especially boys in your <sighs> case, I always tell them that this knife has never been used before. I am a dad. This is a way to. Show you how much I love you, how much I want to have I'm you so around, even when you're flying away from home. I know food and the kitchen and cooking together keeps bringing you back home. This is longer tables, and I can tell you one thing. I had already amazing, great people that I'm very proud of to be part of this podcast. But today probably was my most unique, special podcast ever. Longer tables now is a different place because Ines, Carlotta, and Lucia were part of it. I love you. I mm. am who I am because you three. And forever, you know, I'm not only your dad, but I hope forever. 
I will be your friend. We love you, Dad. We love you, Dad. Forever and ever and ever. That's how you say it usually. Forever and ever and ever. Boom. Boom. Boom.